It's early Sunday morning. Just arrived in Munich. This is out in the community square of the Munich International Airport. Beautiful day. No, it's not nighttime, but this is a tunnel through the mountains. You'll see these in many places where the expressway just continues right through the mountainside. This is kind of a typical highway in Germany. If you're familiar with northern Michigan, it looks a lot like that. And we are on the exact same parallel as this part of Germany is the 45th parallel. You also see a lot of farms and, and things like that. Some pretty scenery here. There are three countries that come very close to one another here, which is Switzerland, Austria, and Germany, and they're all bordered by the Lake of Constance, which is the largest lake in Germany. Kind of cool. Cruising along the Autobahn here at 100 miles an hour. Pretty cool. Don't have to look over your shoulder, LOL. <laughs> country roads are really beautiful over here. The thing that would shock you more than anything is all the roads are beautiful. No potholes, no cracks. They must do something different over here than we do, at least than we do in Michigan. Here's my little Mazda GX5 that I've been driving. So everyone, now I'm in my hotel room. Just had dinner with uh, the guys that I'm traveling with. We had a really nice time. And I uh, wanted to wrap up tonight's Sunday night service in the garage, except tonight we'll call it Sunday night service in Germany. Uh, same letters, just a little bit different location. Um, you know, I, I walked into the hotel room and usually the first thing I'll do is look to see if they have a Gideon Bible that is placed by Gideon's International. Now they place millions of Bibles in hotels around the globe. They place them in college dorms and, and uh, many, many places where many people frequent uh, so they can have a chance to read the Bible and to see what God says to them. So I pulled that out and uh, there's a verse I'm gonna share at the very end of tonight that I uh, actually underlined in this Bible here. Uh, in German, hoping that somebody will see that verse underlined and maybe read it someday. Uh, but hopefully you will want to read it as well, and I will uh, share it with you in just a little bit. But before I do that, you know, I, I get to travel around the globe. Um, I did a lot more before COVID hit, and this is really my first big trip since COVID uh, came on the scene. And so um, things are a lot different traveling internationally right now. I'm amazed uh, going into the hotel, they're telling us we have to have a new COVID test every third day and present that to them in order to be able to stay at the hotel. Um, going through customs at the airport uh, is a whole new experience. It just adds so much time and all of the people that work the gates and such are um, just really under pressure, you can tell, because they're being uh, mandated to double and triple check everything that everybody does. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a struggle for them. I feel for them. Um, interestingly, when I came through uh, Immigration and Customs at uh, Munich today, they were really easy. I showed them my passport. They said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here on business. They said, okay, have a nice week. And that was about it. But when you go to places like the hotels or different things like that, restaurants, they're really strict on wearing masks, showing that you've had a negative test or showing a vaccine card and that kind of thing. Um, so the world is, you know, we're being monitored, you know, for reasons that we may or may not uh, agree with. Uh, and that's everybody's personal opinion and it doesn't matter what your opinion is because it's yours and you, you can have that point of view. So I don't judge anyone. Um, 
but it's it's silly because you know there's four of us that walk into a restaurant there's uh about 35 uh senior citizens that are probably in their 70s and 80s all sitting side by side eating sharing food um no masks on no nothing just having a grand old time all packed into this little room and because four guys are walking by having that mask on is going to protect the rest of the restaurant maybe it's just me but i find that a little bit ironic um but that's a different story but what i wanted to say was with all these like um controls and mandates and and everything um you know we we're studying revelation about a year ago now it's been it's been a year and uh, i'd like to keep discussing it but i'm probably going to filter it into some of these other things that are going on tonight um i was thinking about all these people around the globe and i i come into the hotel room and i i see this gideon bible and written in german uh, for people to read in their own language while they're here and how the whole world needs to know this gospel message and how it's becoming more and more difficult to really share that gospel message. Um, look at Canada. They're being very strict on not allowing worship services and that sort of thing. Um, even in America for quite a while, the churches were not permitted to have more than you know 10 people or something like that in a in an auditorium or a sanctuary, uh, and it differed around the country, but it was you're, you're all familiar with all the things that were mandated and had to take place, and, and most everybody followed those mandates. Uh, the ones that didn't were pointed out and said, hey, this man is promoting, you know, the COVID. Uh, this pastor is having services and those sort of things. So, you know, it's getting a little bit, little bit more difficult uh, in this day and age. Now, in the United States, we know nothing about suffering compared to the rest of the world. And I've been in Brazil, for instance, where um, people, you know how you uh, have like a clover leaf for an expressway over here in the United States? People are literally living in cardboard and tin shacks that are just propped up against each other. And that's where they're living. That's their life existence inside one corner of a clover leaf, and they have to go uh, beg, borrow, and steal just to survive. And then on the other side of the expressway, you have the ultra rich, and it's just it's quite amazing, the um, diversity, if I can use that word, uh, and the difference that there are in people's lives today. And it's all over the world. It's not just in the United States. Uh, the United States. Um, is really, really rich compared to the rest of the world that I've seen. So I'm going to read to you something out of uh, the book of Revelation here uh, from Revelation chapter 7. We went over this, like I said, several months ago, and uh, this is John's vision that Christ gave to him. And John passed it down to the churches. So... In this particular section, it's just four verses I want to read to you. Uh, it's Revelation 9, I'm sorry, 7, verses 9 through 12. And I get the impression when I read this that it's very breathtaking for John. What he sees, what he is experiencing in this vision that God gave him, a future eternity, things that are really going to happen. And, and as far as God's concerned, it's future history. It's that real. It's real. So I read this, and in these four verses, John uses 21 commas. Okay, what's the big deal? Have you ever heard somebody, an eyewitness to a, a shooting or a terrible car accident or something, they'll say, and I saw this, and I saw that, and I saw this, and it's all these pauses and breaks because of the emotion and the trauma, uh, maybe shock that hits them because of what they've just seen. I think that kind of summarizes John in these four verses. These are in verse 7, and it's all moving up, certainly, to the next chapter, which is chapter 8. And in the beginning of that chapter, John says, after this, there was silence in heaven for the space of eight hours. 
In other words, it's like the calm before the storm, but the earth sees, or heaven sees, all the people who have gone to heaven already see, those who are in heaven around the throne see the destruction that's going to come. And there's some really interesting verses in here about um, how, you know, all tribes, all nations, all people are going to worship God. They're going to worship the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Let me read these verses for you real quick, okay? Here we go. Uh, Revelation 7, 9 through 12. After this, after the angel opened, or after Christ opened the seventh seal, I'm sorry, after Christ opened the sixth seal. After this, I beheld. I beheld what? Okay. The angel, or I'm sorry, Jesus just finishing, finished opening the sixth of the seven seals on the scroll that God, his father, handed to him. And he revealed the things that we're going to read here. The seventh seal that was opened next is what brought this grave, serious silence in heaven for people to see what will come to those who are not willing to trust God as their Savior. So let me read. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth on the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and about the elders, that's the church, that's the people who accept Jesus as their Savior before this time happens, and the four beasts, the four beasts are four worship leaders, basically, uh, in heaven, and... Um, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forevermore. Amen. So that's the scripture. And what I want you to see is people all over this globe, the people in the United States of America, the people in Europe, in Germany where I am now, in South America where things are so difficult, in China, in Russia, in the Middle East, you name it. You name it. One day, all people are going to bow to Christ. Maybe not as Savior, but they will ultimately submit to his glory and power and might and see that everything that he said in this book that we call the Bible is true. And I just want to ask you to take a good long thought about this. This is something that every person has to deal with. And uh, saying yes to the message of the Bible is what is the most important. I'm going to put a Bible verse on the screen now. And I will read it to you. It's going to be shown in German. I'll translate it for you into English. And think about these words, very short verse, just a few words, but very important to understand. Okay, here's the verse I was telling you about. It is John chapter 14, verse 6. And here's what it says. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the only way that we can enter heaven and be with Christ in eternity rather than hell is to basically trust and believe what the Bible says about Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is our Redeemer. We are redeemed through him and his blood for the sacrifice that he gave to on our behalf. He does all the work. We don't clean ourselves up and make ourselves all perfect to come to him. 
we come to him as we are. And then he will help us understand where we need to make changes in our lives. He says in the verses immediately preceding this, to Thomas and the other disciples who were there with him also, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to you and take you to be with me so that where I am, you may be also. Jesus is preparing a place for everyone who will accept him. He wants you to accept him and know him as your personal Lord and Savior. There's no other way to escape hell other than accepting Jesus. I know many times it's looked at as something that I've got to give up so much to do this. But what happens is once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we willingly change because we see the blessing that comes in knowing him. And then we begin to want to change. We begin to want to do what he asks us to do in the Bible. And it's a lifelong thing that takes place. In closing, I just want to repeat that verse. Jesus said unto them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. I'm asking you to come to Jesus, ask him to forgive you, thank him for giving his life on the cross and shedding his blood to pay for our sins so that we don't have to pay for it because we never could. Believe that he rose from the dead on the third day and ascended to his Father in heaven. Ask him for that forgiveness and believe it with all your heart that he will do it. God bless you all. Thank you for listening this evening, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good night.